All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. Uh, this time around, and you know, I've promised this for quite some time on the Discord. We're finally having a look at Strapi. So this is a framework, or rather, a headless CMS, as they uh, classify themselves, um, that a lot of people have been asking me about. So there's, there's like a bunch of people on the Discord server, and some uh, vis visitors on the stream was as well asking, you know, if I know anything about Strapi, what do I think about it? And until you guys started asking questions, I actually didn't even hear about it. But once I heard it like for fourth or fifth time or whatever, I decided to have a look. And honestly, it actually looks really cool. So I am pretty interested in it and pretty excited. And um, the reason or like the objective, I guess, aim of today's stream is to figure out what it is, uh, how does it work? how flexible it is and you know how much can we customize uh, some parts of it so we're going to basically build a very basic application use strapi as a backend and then build a very stupid simple front end in i guess react js or whatever we'll see how that goes just to see you know how much can we customize it and what can we actually do with it so let's uh, just jump into a quick start guide um, yes, I guess we're going to go for the quick start project here. So I already created the empty folder exploring Strapi for uh, BXJS. We're going to have a uh, GitHub repo as usual. So I'm just going to run the yarn uh, create. You know what I need to do? I need to disable the antivirus because it makes VSL slow and we don't want this. So there we go. This should make it a bit faster. So from what I've read, the quick start project uses the um, SQLite. Um, of course, you can connect Strapi to a proper database if you want to, but you know, for the tutorial purposes, essentially, we're going to go with uh, SQLite because it's just easier and I don't have to set up the database. But it works with Postgres, it works with MySQL, MariaDB, and you can even connect it to MongoDB if you want to, which is uh, kind of nice. So the question is, yes, okay, we're running the beta version. So exactly the one that is currently in the quick start guide. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna run that. Okay, install it and navigate to wait. Why is it says navigate immediately? Is it just gonna run it for me? Oh no, it's oh god damn it! It's creating it in my. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna kill that. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna remove that folder. Um, exploring Stripe, and we're gonna rerun that, but in a correct folder. Right, that's probably not gonna fly, right? Because I am uh, have that. Are you okay? You know, no, it, it did work. Okay. Um, right, where's my yarn create? So we're gonna call it um, exploring Strapi, right? I sure as hell hope VS Code doesn't freak out doing that. Theoretically, we should actually see files here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this works. So we're gonna scaffold the project uh, and start in dependencies. Um, the cool part is that basically it looks like it allows you to create APIs and content types and database schema and all of that just using UI basically, which looks really cool. Okay, uh, but uh, right, so let's see. Uh, meanwhile, let's have a look at the package JSON. So while it's installing all of its stuff, we got what? We got Strapi admin utils. We got a bunch of plugins here. It even has the email plugin, which is really cool. Uh, okay, so bookshelf and next and uses SQLite as I already said. Right. Uh, okay, this seems like a really nice setup. Okay, it uses config Airbnb, which I am not a huge fan of, but you know, that's that's minor, we can edit the slint uh, RC. Uh, right, so we got develop start build strapi. I what is the different? What does this do? Okay, we're gonna figure that out. Okay, we got the author. Yeah, okay, so this is straightforward It's basically mostly uh, built around the plugins and extensions. So I assume it's like really flexible, right? So if it has this many plugins, we should be able to customize all the parts. So what I'm interested in is part one, can we customize the authentication? So we're gonna try to see if we can, you know, change the registration and authentication flow at least a bit or tweak it a bit and don't need to change it completely. But I just want to, you know, uh, let's say we want to verify so that the password that the user uses is not in the have I been pound database, right? And then I want to see uh, how does custom API creation works and how hard is it to actually make your own custom uh, APIs. Okay, so it actually just starts the server right away. Interesting. Okay, so okay, now we get to admin, right? So we got this. Let me just zoom in for a bit. 
finish the setup. Okay, it's just Tim password tests. Yes, it's gonna be a very secure password. Um, do I already wanna? Uh, I, okay, yeah, sure. You know what? Let's. Yeah, come on. I don't know. Don't save this password. Test one to three. It says yeah, very secure password. There we go. I mean, I get that, you know, typically you want to scaffold it on your server, so you want to have a proper password. Um, the fact that it suggests tutorials right away is pretty interesting. Okay, so, right, let's see. So we created that, create a restaurant content type, navigate to plugins content type builder. So I guess this is the button, right? Uh, create a, yeah, okay, so you create a content type, and in this case, they're creating a restaurant. But we are, I mean, okay, let's see what we can do. So let's create a to-dos, I guess. <laughs> be boring and just create a to-dos, right? Um, okay, it doesn't allow you to do the, um, okay, advanced settings, to-do content type. Yeah, okay, let's uh, just add a to-do and title. So we're adding a new string that is gonna be title, I guess. Let's just uh, add another field. We are gonna have, um, date, yeah, I guess create it. I mean, I guess it probably has the created at field anyway, right? So we got the title and we got let's add the boolean and say uh, done. Can you do like set to true required field, unique fields? Okay, and then we want another field which is gonna be relation. Do we have um, user permission relation? Can you? has one relation yes has one but to what uh users there we go has one user cool wait so <laughs> this is kind of amazing to be honest so we just constructed the to do schema in like two seconds without any programming which is i can dig that so this is our content type users um okay so here's the question where where was that uh so this is content type builder, I get, okay, permission. No, this is permission, right? User permission role. Um, where did, did I just, no, wait a second. Where, what was I doing? Where was that permission? Uh, can I go back please? No, did I just screw it up? Add content type to do, right? So this is what we did last time, done. Right, so we add string. That is a title. Okay, we add boolean, that is done. And we add relation. Did I forget to press like a save button or something? So it has user, right? Ah, right, okay. So you have to explicitly save it for it to work. Okay, cool, save. There we go, waiting for restart. Okay, so it basically also restarts the server for you, which is interesting. So, okay, this is the back button. This is not what we want. So now we got this to do relation cool. Create a category content type. What is this? Uh, string left hand menu content type builder at content type. Okay, so this is just a restaurant categories. This is a, like relation tutorial. Add categories to category content types category. Okay, so I guess you can go here. And add a group Add a content type content manager, I guess. This basically allows you to content type to do and you can manually add a to do if you want to, right? Yep. Okay, this is you can even do like layouts and stuff. Uh, right, so displayed fields sort on. Uh, okay, so how does this work? Edit use it. Okay, so you can create views for your content that basically allow you to edit stuff. Title done user. Okay, enable search, displayed fields. Uh, how do I work with this? To do, um, I guess, oh, it's, it's, ah, okay. So you have, this is the plugin configuration. Well, this is what you actually want. And you can literally add the to do's from here. Interesting, okay, no, I don't want that cancel. Back to to do's. Okay, so we don't wanna do this manually. We wanna add the user actually. So we're gonna add a test user test email com because this is whatever and password is gonna be test one or three because I'm very creative with it. Uh, no, don't save it to my passwords. Right, so we now we have our user, right? Um, cool, okay, so we got that permissions. We don't care about this, I guess. Uh, no, I guess we do care about this. 
Click the public role, scroll down to permissions, find rest. Okay, so there is a public role somewhere, roles and permissions. We got the public role. No, but public role is not what we want. We want authenticated role, right? And when the user is authenticated, he can create, delete, update, find, count, do whatever, but only um, allow these actions for is authentic. Can I say like you only can do this for your own actions? So authenticated, yeah, okay. Um, well, let's let, we will figure it out, right? So we for now it just says okay. So if you are logged in, you can edit to do's. Okay, uh, yes, so we, yes, learn how to use Strapi with Next.js. That sounds perfect. Actually, they even have a Next.js tutorial. This is kind of awesome. So I'm gonna kill the server for now and we're gonna um, CD exploring Strapi, git init, git add. So what is the folders here? Public is just the uploads and, okay, this is like literally public front ends. There is, this is user settings. So this is our config basically. This is JVT. Okay, so you can set up your own JVT secret, which is nice. I assume this is the config for app. Like this is pretty solid. And then you got the API. Okay, so this is the API, but we're gonna come to that. So it's auto generated the API for to-do models, which is pretty neat, okay. Right, so let's just, uh, you know what, let's just commit that. Um, git add, git commit, uh, basic strappy app scaffold uh, with users and to-dos, right? So we got our basic setup, assign the commit message. Right, okay, so we got that. Now we need to set up the Next.js thing. So um, I'm just gonna make a Next.js frontend for that. Yarn at Next, React, and React DOM. This is gonna be very basic. We're not gonna do anything fancy here. Okay, um, ta -da 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 -dum. so it does all of that stuff. It's really cool that they actually have tutorials separately for like Gatsby Next, Next, and whatever the hell you want, um, or you know, you want to work with, which is uh, pretty damn cool. So they are, I assume, using GraphQL, which is uh, another cool feature. So they basically, by default, they auto generate GraphQL uh, endpoint for you. So if you want, you can use REST API, and if you want, you can just use the GraphQL. Okay, so we installed the next React React DOM. I wonder, I hope they won't conflict if we do it all in one uh, folder, but let, let's just try it. So we need the pages folder, right? And we need index.js here. Index.js and we're gonna export default h1, hello next.js. So just to make sure that it actually <laughs> works properly. Right, so package JSON, um, where are our scripts? We are gonna add another script, it's called frontend, and it's gonna be next, uh, what was it, next dev? Next, yeah, just next, right, there we go. Okay, so we actually need two terminals now, which means I will kill that, I will start my uh, Windows terminal, and I'll just use that project bxjs um, exploring strapi is what we want. We're gonna open that in another terminal. Um, projects, yeah, let me just repeat that. So uh, yarn, I assume yarn develop is what we want for the backend, right? This is gonna start our strapi uh, thing. Okay, cool. That That's actually a lot quicker than the first time. So I guess, I guess it caches the builds between the runs. Right, and then we start yarn frontend for our uh, next JS frontend. Okay, cool. So theoretically, we should now see the manager over here. Cool. And we should now see the uh, I don't want to do this here localhost 3000. This is our next JS front end, right? So this is all good. Okay. Um, now, okay, I don't care about the styling. So I'm not going to care about the component styling layout, whatever for front end, because the, you know, the whole point of this is to figure out the strapi, not the next JS. I think I did enough next JS streams already. <laughs> Okay, um, sign up and sign in. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I guess let's start with uh, sign up and sign in. I'm gonna call it login and uh, register JS, right? And, uh, oh, they have their own client side API package, is that it? Generate Stripe deliver project, Stripe new, no, this is the backend, okay. So I was like, wait, do you have like a library that is just does everything for you? Stripe next restaurants. Um, 
Where is registration procedure? So we created them. Is it like my ad block blocks some of the, ah, there we go, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, I don't care about layout for now. Where is my registration? Sign up, sign in. Um, yeah, that is really helpful. Create your registration page. Uh, okay, yes. Try bad admin with login. Why are you putting me into login? I guess you can just redirect to it, right? Add your first user from, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, okay, come on. Like, is there is there a guide for this here? Guides, API endpoints, epoch users, API documentation, posts. Uh, okay, get posts. What is what is posts? Is it like uh, if you content? Okay, so if you create a content type post, you will get an endpoint slash posts, and it will be okay. So this seems relatively straightforward. Authentication is what we're interested in right now. Okay, and uh, registration. I actually created the user already, but let's do a registration anyway, right? So we got this register page. I'm gonna just copy the index for now. Right, um, so let's see. We got Axios. I think I'm just gonna use fetch because I'm lazy. Okay, and then we got this, this, and this. So, auth yeah, okay, cool. Um, I guess I'm just gonna hard code the local host for now and then, you know, Basically, again, this is not about the building front end. This is about figuring out um, figuring out what is strap in, how does it work? So I'm just gonna do that. Uh, and we're gonna have two inputs, type, text, placeholder. Uh, so it's gonna be login. And then we're gonna have another input type. Uh, what is the type of input for passwords? I'm always forgetting this. As, is it uh, hidden? I think it's hidden, right? And then you got button um, register. So I think that should basically render our registration form, right? Okay, yeah, um, no, not hidden. <laughs> okay, input type password. It is, is it password? Am I overthinking? Yes, I am overthinking it is type password, God damn it. Okay, um, right, so now we just, you know what, I'm gonna be again lazy and just do this. Display um, flex, flex direction uh, columns. I'm just gonna, you know, format it a bit. Yeah, it's okay, it's fine, that's fine. And then we're just gonna limit it in width to like 300 pixels or something, so it's not incredibly big. There we go, okay. So what do we need now? Now we need to use some, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. let me import react from react. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we need on click, whoops, on click. So we're gonna register, right? And then we're gonna define this register function over here. Register, there we go. Now we need to get the values from inputs. So what I'm gonna do is since we don't really care about, like we don't, we're not gonna do like form validation or whatever. So I'm just gonna create two refs and pull the values from the refs. Um, so I'm gonna log in ref, use ref, yes, auto import from react and PVD ref. Okay, use ref as well, right? So this is gonna be ref login ref like you know typically you want to have like full managed form with validation and everything but again we don't really care about that stuff now so i'm just gonna go for this and um okay const login is login ref dot current dot value const pass is uh, pvd ref current value const log login pass right so we log this stuff let's just check that it actually works open the console here right clean this up asd one to three perfect so this works okay where was our login thing there we go so this is oh we're actually doing registration not login okay fine uh email we also need an email god damn it okay fine we can we can do email as well placeholder email and you are gonna be email ref right 
So login, there we go. Email ref. Imagine if you would take some sort of a front end that basically have, you know, all the bits like auth registration, um, authentication, maybe some dashboards, then you could have like a system built in half an hour basically because Strapi does the backend for you, front end does the UI for you and you don't have to do anything yourself, which is um, pretty incredible that you can do this right now. Okay, email ref. Um, so we got this email. Let's just double check that this actually works. ASD A at A, one to three. Cool, so we got our data working. Now, um, yeah, I guess I don't really care about this anymore. I don't care. Okay, so we do care. I don't care about this login page. We do care about our content management dashboard. And there is our, um, should I use Axios or should I just go with fetch? This is the body, I guess, you know what, I'm just gonna be lazy and go with fetch. So we need to do what? So first of all, there's got to be a sync as I could not be bothered to work manually with promises. And then we're gonna say, okay, result is await uh, fetch. We're gonna send it to our endpoint, right? And then we're gonna say method is post. Um, da -da -da -da, what do I want? Headers, we want um, content type JSON, um, no wait, application JSON, right? Uh, let's not mistype that. And then body is gonna be our, uh, what is the body username, email, password is what we wanna pass. So I guess it makes sense to just rename our variables to just make it nice. Uh, so it's gonna be username, email, password, right? And uh, then results, so what does it return actually? Is it JSON? Yes, it is JSON. Okay, res JSON. So we we'll parse it as JSON. And console log. Let's just log it for now to see what is going on. Yes, I know that fetch is not defined, but you're running in a browser, so you are fine. Remove the last comma. No, I mean comma trailing commas are fine, right? So that should work perfectly okay. Um yeah, see it parses and uh what, what, what do you mean? No, that's that's okay. You can do that. That's perfectly valid. I mean, I have it here as well. Trailing commas are actually good for Git management, right? Because when you, if you don't have it and you add a new line, that would mean that you add a line break to this line and then comma and then a new value. Well, if you have a trailing comma, you would actually just add a new line and a value over here. That's perfectly valid and it works perfectly fine. Okay, so a uh, new user, uh, new at user.com, password one to three. Register and bad requests. Uh, okay, bad request how, please tell me. Unexpected token O in JSON position one. I guess I have to stringify it, right? This is one of the things that I don't really like about um, fetch is this, that you have to manually do half of the things. Okay, new user new at user.com test 103 register hey okay hey we actually created a user successfully okay that was a lot easier there you go all right so we created a user does it set a cookie or not or is it like just purely jvt with um so you have to basically manage it yourself so this is the one that set it so we got the course okay so I imagine it doesn't set any cookies and you basically have to, okay, this, no, wait, this, this is, where's, where's our response? This one, how do you know? This one, there we go, okay. So we got response headers. Yeah, it doesn't set any, so basically you have to manage the JSON web token yourself. Okay, so which means that we created a new user, we got the user object and we got this JVT, which we have to save in the user, I guess, session storage or something. So this is gonna be um, JVT user and I'm just gonna say window session storage set item JVT. It's gonna be JVT and then we're gonna do the same for user and it's gonna be user. Okay, so we do that, right? Um, 
once again, I don't think I have anything in my session stores just yet, which is perfectly fine. So the registration works. Now we need to do so once we set this, we actually need to redirect the user. Oh, boy, where do we need to redirect the user? Now we need to redirect the user to I guess our index page, right? Uh, watching your work is making me feel smart. I mean, that's a good feeling to be honest. So I would <laughs> I think that's a good thing that you know, um, okay, whatever. So let, <laughs> let me just get back to thinking. So we need to redirect the user back to the home page, which means we need next JS uh, docs because I don't remember how to do this properly. Da -da 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 -da. Redirect. Um, this is the server side redirects. No, it navigates. There was like a navigate to or whatever. Navigation, navigation user agent. Come on, I knew I know that there was uh, programmatically. So I know that there is a link thing, right? Routing with link, forcing link to expose imperatively. Router, router push. There we go. This is what I want. Okay, so we need the router and we need to say router push slash, right? So we just do that. Okay, so and now we just need the login page, which would do exactly the same, but instead of posting it to registration. So first of all, we don't need email here, which is a nice cut out. So kill the email application JSON. Uh, yes, we do the same. So I assume it returns the same result as the registration page. So let's just quickly, this is the registration. Da -da -da, this is post. Okay, so you have to pass token as a bearer, which is fine. We're going to get to that. Ident okay, so <laughs> it's like when you register, you have to pass in the username and password. But when you log in, it's going to be identifier and password. And I guess it can identifier be either. Okay, so this is why. So it can be either an email or a username. Okay, cool. So we can actually say a username or email, which is actually quite handy. Okay, I like that. So we do that response, we get the same user and JVT. Cool. Um, so theoretically, if we now go to the login page and try to log in over here, all right, so we're going to log in. There we go. So we got our I forgot the user I created. So we got the test user with password test 103. It actually works. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 wait a second. Uh, right. I should probably I should probably add try catch. No, it doesn't work because it's uh, try. Come on. Catch error. And um, I guess we need some state for error, right? const error set error. So we're gonna use state here and it's gonna be empty for now. And then we're gonna just say set error, error um, to string. Uh, what? No, 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 to string. There we go. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fragment over here. And then if we have an error, we're just gonna put a div with a style that says uh, back, uh, border, I don't know, one pixel red, I solid, right? This is what you want to say. And then we just say error over here. Okay, so theoretically, if we go back to login, we go test test one or three, there is what? How the what? Wait a second, why do you? There should be an error there, right? So it throws for 100. Oh, because fetch doesn't understand there. Oh, okay, fetch is a bit annoying. Maybe, maybe we should go with Axios or something. But okay. Um, so right, there is res. Okay, so we I'm just gonna use the structuring here to go JVT and user. Now the problem is console log. I think we need to check it. Okay, uh, fetch check errors, status codes, I remember that you have to do it manually as well, which is annoying as hell. Maybe we should just abstract it into a new uh, function like post. Oh boy, come on. I remember seeing a nice snippet somewhere on MDN, I think. 
Wages, Axios. Yeah, I mean, Axios is pretty big. This is exactly why I don't want to, you know, pull it in. On one hand, this is a demo, so we don't really care much about it. I'm just figuring out the, but you know, okay, you know what, whatever. We're gonna figure it out real quick. Um, JSON error, buddy. Okay, um, there is, there gotta be an example somewhere with a bloody status code. Uh, I could go into my old demos, but, it will be easier. GitHub fetch. There we go. This got to be here. And if response status 404, da -da -da, catch object. Um, da -da -da. Come on. Come on now. Okay. Uh, I guess we just have to check it here if it's 200, right? And then if it's not, then just throw instead of doing the arrest JSON. Um, <laughs> if... We're gonna just do a very stupid thing, right? Just throw new error. Um, error logging in, I guess, non 200 code. Let's just keep it simple, you know what? Okay, so in theory, okay, again, then here I can just go JVT user. My whole dance with this was unnecessary. Okay, I also don't need back ticks here. I can just use normal quotes. Right, let's see. Um, I don't know, we go to login. Uh, let's just clear everything. Test, test 103. And there we go. Okay, cool. So I'm actually trying to send this payload to the register. This is my error. <laughs> that was, okay. Um, so this is the URL we wanna use. I'm gonna throw it over here. Okay, so in theory right now, if we go back over here, reload that, clean everything, test, test one, three. Uh, cool, so we logged in and theoretically now we got our JVT and user in the session storage, which is okay. Uh, first of all, let me just rename this to login and rename this to login. And then we also want to do the same for registration just to show the error, which again, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna do this for the sake of consistency. So we got this, we got, da, 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 uh, we do this. So this is the bit that we want, right? Uh, I guess I can just copy the whole function, right? Uh, no, not really, I can't because I can copy this bit. So I can do a try here. And then I can do this. And what I need is I need the error state is what we're missing here. And we need to re-import use state. There we go. Um, save. What do you what do you mean error? Error is assigned but never used. What do you mean never used? What is this? What are you? Oh, god damn it. Did that why? Yes, <laughs> because I defined state within the callback function. Okay, makes sense. Cool, so we got registration, we got login working. Now we are in the index page, right? Um, let's start by just adding a simple check. Uh, okay, let me just import react, come on, from react. So we're gonna go with a simple check, use effect that is basically gonna run once on render and we're just basically gonna say, okay, window uh, session storage, get item JVT. So we try to get our JVT from the session storage, whoops, not minus, that should be equal. And if there is no JVT, then we just say router, um, no, that's not, that's not how you spell router, right? So go here. And we go, no, God damn, what is wrong with me today? Push slash login, right? So we just redirect user to login if he's not logged in. So in theory, so now we're logged in, we're fine, that works. If we kill that, we reload, it redirects us to login, so it works perfectly fine. Okay, login into that, there we go. Okay, cool, so now we can actually start building the uh, to do so we have this to do's defined in strapi now we can actually start working with api endpoints so uh yes so we need to first let's do the creation um okay so we need 
div over here. Bleh. Okay, and then we got another div that is going to be our uh, input form. So type text placeholder uh, title. Let's just go with title, and then we're going to have button that is going to say create to do um, but probably not in caps which is probably bad okay style again i'm going to be lazy and do inline styling here so it's going to be this no display um flex flex direction it's going to be column with is going to be 200 so we don't want this to be extremely large if we go here we now should see this to do thing cool and then we're gonna have div um, do this h2 to do's list right and for now i'm just gonna go pre and then do json stringify to do's so we're gonna have this here as a state set to do's do, 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 use states there we go and it's gonna be an empty array for now right um okay Cool. So we got this, we got the to do's lists. Um, okay, so we need to write this thing, we need it to, to work. Again, I'm going to use const uh, to I guess, ti let's just call it title ref. I guess, uh, sorry, I guess, uh, no, not God damn it, what is wrong with me? Okay, so I'm going to use use ref again, because again, we're not going to need to validate the um, we're not going to use form validation or anything like this. It's going to be very simple title ref right and on on this on click we are going to have create to do right but what no what did you what broadly decompress where is this coming from okay so create to do and so we're going to get title from title ref current value right and now, um, so we're gonna use fetch, and we also need to get this JVT here. Can we can we actually get this JVT from use effect and somehow store it? We could store it in ref, right? So we can just say, hey, const uh, JVT ref, use ref, right? So I mean, we, there's no need to basically get the storage on every click so we can just do it once and say jvt ref uh right so we only want to do this over here current equals jvt so we said jvt which means that we can just grab it from the um from the ref now what do we want to do so we got this to do thing i wonder if they actually have any they're like auto generated documentation here or something. So we got this type builder doesn't seem to have anything file uploads permissions documentation is this? No, this is the docs for the strapi itself. I remember seeing in the documentation they have like the um, the plugin somewhere that basically auto generated API docs for you, which sounds pretty handy. Okay, but we just do posts. Okay, so we basically slash to do's I guess or is it yeah so i named it to do so it should be to do's okay cool which means we're gonna grab the endpoint from here and it's gonna be uh to do -dum. so i guess it's just this right and i imagine if i request it now we should get the forbidden right because we're not authenticated okay cool so this is our endpoint and do, 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 do. so once we're done here once we set the jvt we're gonna fetch the list of to do's right um so i'm gonna define a function for that because we're gonna refetch it get to do's is gonna be a sync and essentially all it's gonna do is gonna say await fetch uh, endpoint and then we need to set the headers, right? Because we're using the bearer for authentication, which was in the authentication docs. Uh, there we go. Headers, uh, authorization bearer, and this is gonna be JVT ref current. So this is basically all we have to do. And then we just need to convert it JSON. And uh, let's just console log res for now. Right, uh, so this is gonna call it get to do's here. Okay, 
So if we go back, forbidden, what do you mean forbidden? I did, did I execute it correctly? To do um, to the request headers, yeah, okay, so we set the bearer. Why are you forbidden? Okay, did I, I did, I did update the permissions, right? Uh, authenticated. Oh, no, I didn't. I guess I didn't press save here. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, there we go. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, so theoretically, now if I reload the page, and okay, to do's are empty, but we are getting the response here, which means that we can just say set to do's to results here. And let's just rename it to to do's. No, that's a bad idea. Let's just go with the result. That's fine. Okay, so we got this. Now we need to post it, which means we got to go to the docs and see what uh, endpoint do we use. So I guess it's just slash posts. Yeah, so we post to it with a payload, I guess. Uh, create a post returns its value. Okay, so man, how does it work with the schema? So we got to do's and it has title and done. I assume done by default will be false. So we just need to send the title. Let's try it. You know what? So, okay, we say uh, fetch to endpoint on stress again, await this, make it a sync. Now we need to set, um, I need to copy the headers, right? So we're always going to have this authentication header. Like, yeah, abstracting the fetch into a standalone util library that would basically do this for you might be quite a bit better. And we also need the content type header. And we also need the body here, which in our case will just be title, right? We do that. And then we say, t -t 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 -t, come on, console log rest. We see how this result works. I imagine this is not, uh, maybe it will work. I don't know. Test to do. Click. Um, there is fetch. Uh, fail to execute fetch on window request with get head cannot have body. Oh, I forgot to put the method post. Right there we go. Of course, get cannot have body. That is a fair point. Um, okay. Test to do. Uh, what do you mean? No. Uh, what state update on the model? Yeah. Okay. You know what? There we go. Test to do. Create. Response. Course. Body headers. So wait a second, where is it? 204. Okay, so it seems like I actually created it and then it redirected me and returned the to do itself. Uh, right, because I did not do the then r r json, right? So we need json and I imagine this json. So for refresh, we should see one to do here. So other to do. Why is the user now? So we got the relation, but it seems like automat it automatically does not add it from the current user. Okay, so we got the other to do and it does return the other to do, which means what we can do here is we can say, okay, new to do's is gonna be to do's and then res. And then we're just gonna set to do's to the res, right? Uh, no, sorry, to the new to do's. There we go. Okay, so in theory, now if we refresh that, we got the to do's, and that's probably should be null two. So let's just uh, format it nicely, reload that. What uh, error connection refused? Did my strapi just died? No, it didn't. What is happening? There we go. Okay, cool. So if we add one more to do, create that, it gets added to the list. Everything is nice and easy. So I guess now we need to render them properly, right? So let's just do that to do map to do. Let's go with div. Uh, no, not what react. No, that's not what I want to see. Okay, and then we just go input type uh, checkbox. Um, checked is gonna be to do done, right? And then um, and then we want to do what was it? Oh, no, God, come on. Was it title, right? This is what we want. Reload that. Uh, don't forget ID. Why do we need that? We don't really need ID here. I mean, again, you know, I'm not don't care much about the uh, accessibility and stuff like this for now, because this is just a demo. 
So I'm gonna give the key title and this should be fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, that looks ugly as hell, but you know what, whatever. So you're just gonna style this. Can I just, yeah, say display flex, uh, justify content center. Yes, keys are important. Uh, no, not justify content. God, I'm, is it align content, align items? Right, I forgot that they now have the full on docs here. Um, align self, was it align content or align item? Brown said standard display space between around items, cross axis and flexbox container, main axis items, uh, the room, was it align items? Oh, no. um, da -da -da, let me think. Uh, yeah, no, okay, I guess we can just, yeah, well, you know what, whatever. That looks ugly as hell, but I don't really care about now. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to give an input on change, right? And then we just need to say toggle to do, give it a current to do. And now we need to define this const toggle to do which is gonna be a sync and it's basically a const new done uh, is gonna be to do done. No, I guess, uh, wait a second. So this is gonna be a to do and then it's gonna be checked. I'm just gonna pass this. So we're gonna get an event from here and this is gonna be event target uh, checked, right? This is what we wanna pass. And essentially, we just gonna so checked. Uh, we're gonna post, but we need a different endpoint, right? So we need an endpoint here. That okay? So the endpoint right now is slash to dos, but we need um. Da -da 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 -da, wait a second. So that's our to dos ID. Okay, so we got this to do ID. I assume it's just this, right? So we got. Put, okay, so we need the put method first. Put, and I imagine you just put the body, uh, partial update a post by ID and returns its value. Okay, so we'll get the full post. And in this case, done is gonna be checked. Right, this looks fine. And then we need to go ahead and just do to do's map to do. So if to that to do ID equals, uh, no, that's, that's a bad naming. I just call it T for now. If T ID equals to do ID, then we return our new value. Otherwise we return T, the return. And then we just set new to do's. Okay, so I think that should actually update them. Uh, just reload that, okay. And the component is changing value of input. Okay, um, what am I missing here? Is saying you're not controlled, but you are controlled. What do you not like about this? What am I missing? Uh, component is changing an uncontrolled input of type chambox to be controlled. Input element should not switch from uncontrolled to control. But it is controlled, what are you talking about? State input type value. Is it one value not checked? Um, okay, wait a second. I, it's been ages since I've done anything with checkboxes in React. Do you want value? You want this? No? Okay, now yes, checked was correct. Oh, I know it, not, not default check, right? So we want check, that is correct. I mean, it gives a warning, but it actually works. And it seems to, whoops, to also update it on the server. So if we reload, yes, we get them. And this way it doesn't complain, god damn it. <laughs> okay then, I guess it's just a warning and React misunderstands what we're actually doing with the content there. Uh, but yeah, that seems to be fine. Okay, so this works. Now the problem we have now, so this actually, you know what, let, let me just commit that because we've, we've did quite a bit of things. Uh, so I need to ignore dot next because it's a cache thing, git ignore, git adds, git commits, at basic next.js frontend, right? With uh, login, registration, 
to do management. Okay, sign the commit. Right, yarn, front ends, restart that. Okay, cool. Now, um, there is a problem, right? So we now, even though we do have to do this, they, uh, oh, come on, come on now, come on now. Uh, I mean, so far, Stripey is very impressive. Um, I'm just trying to figure out. So we, I did specify the user relation there, right? So one thing I wonder, why is it not setting the user to currently authenticated user? I'm guessing I just, um, I just do the user permissions, permissions role, advance it. Can I user custom unique fields? So, okay. Um, I imagine this should be some simple switch strappy relation current user. So that's gotta be some easy, like this is a very common thing, right? And there's got to be an easy way to make it work, essentially. So I feel like I just, uh, I am not passing a user, but this Strapi already knows the user because we are authenticated, right? So I expect it to pick it up from the um, session, essentially. Now, the thing is accessing user from request, this user. I guess we could write a custom uh, middleware that would do that, but that seems like, come on, it's, it should be in there. It should automatically do this for us. Uh, version three beta. Um, user, this is no once. User table collection, morning SQL user, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. This is not what we want. Um, Strapi add current user to model. Is it, they calling them models, right? To content types, to content type, I guess. How to get current user info in models JS? Connect state user. And user modifying content. Okay, so it seems like there's no simple way to do that. So we have to basically uh, modify the endpoints or I guess the API. So it's a good point to dive in and see how to actually do that. Right, uh, where's our documentation? So get puts, yeah, the. As I said, there is a GraphQL, but we don't really care about that right now. Obviously, one solution as um, suggested by the Twitch chat would be to manually pass in the user, but that's that means that anyone can create to-dos for anyone else as long as they are authenticated, which is meh. So we need to modify gets, post inputs, or actually all of the methods, right? So we need a common middleware that would check and only return and allow modifying the to do's for the current user. So, okay, let's see, controllers. Do we want controller? Routing requests, responses, models, uh, model information, divine root, life cycle callbacks, is that what we want before save? Okay, so this is our models user. Okay, so, da -da 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 -da. right, now this, okay, so this is like, this already comes into the modeling domain when you have to, figure out how to model it correctly. Well, this is a bit of a pain in the ass. I honestly, such a, blah. I honestly thought that Strapi would do this for you. Um, but let me see, maybe we missed something here. So we got the users here, we got the permissions. Define allowed actions for content manager, content type builder, email settings manager, user permissions. This is, okay. It's just like a bunch of different, Hmm. Interesting. So we got a uh, role permission. So we got the user, right? And relation with permissions. This is fine. Read more about content type. Uh, okay, so let's let's see the guide stock creating a model. Name field model options, ID attribute, UUID, boolean enable, blah, 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 define attributes, validations. Okay, so there's even some validations that they have by default, which is kind of nice. Relation concept, one uh, attributes owner model user. Okay. Uh, Mangu's example, pet find populate owner. Okay, so this is more creating the custom methods. This is not what we want. Uh, model address via user. Okay, this is again populating. No, this is not what we want either. Come on, really this is such a simple case and it's not covered anywhere. 
Ta -ta 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 -ta. This gotta be an easy solution to this, right? Controller authentication, so password reset. So there's even password reset cover, that's quite nice. Add a new provider, templates, configurations. Okay, let's see concepts, maybe one-to-one -one relation. So this is, no, we need one-way relation, right? So it's basically X belongs to, to do belong to user. Uh, this is all Goose owner. So this, yeah, I mean, this thing is, so they send it in the body. I mean, I guess we could also send it in the body. This is like the stupidest solution, but come on, there's gotta be a better way of doing that. Parameters. Oh, they even have like pagination integrated in the API. That is neat. Okay, routing services, webhooks. No, webhooks is not what we want, right? So it's just basically gonna trigger something else on them. Advanced, maybe it's an advanced. Middlewares, there we go. Okay, config environments, middleware JSON. Uh, middleware response time. Okay, this is the middleware lib. So this still is not to do service. Read the okay, let's see. So we got the models. This is before save, after save settings. So this is description of our attributes. Plugin user permissions. Why is it plugin user permissions? Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna touch that. We got the controller and we got the config. So those are the routes. Okay, I imagine you can create your own custom routes here. And this just maps it to the default to do find one, count one, and so on and so forth, right? Policy, okay, so there are some policies. Maybe this is what we want. Uh, where is the policies? Policies. Uh, see the policies concept. Okay, let's see the policies concept. So I'm gonna kill that for now, close this. So policies are functions which have the ability to execute specific logic on each request before it reaches the controller action. This sounds like exactly what we want. Um, da -da 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 -da. Where are the policies defined? ABI config policies, yes, global policy. Okay, so we, sounds like policies is exactly what we want, right? Um, using Strapi generate policy is authenticated. Cool, okay, so we don't really want that. So this is like global policy. So you get access to the, con so this seems like a middleware exactly, right? Okay, so we uh, we don't really have any policy. How do I generate a policy for a specific route? This is global policies, this is plugin policies, scoped policies, config policies. So I guess we can just manually create a policies folder, but that sounds really, do I have to do it manually? It seems like, okay, and then you have to add it. Okay, so I guess you just create a file policies uh, okay, policies, let's call it handle you. Um, mm, yeah, I guess handle user. Let's just go with that. What? No, why is it a folder? <laughs> God damn it. Okay, VS Code decided that I wanted two folders. Uh, no, thank you. So I'm just going to create a file, handle user. Okay, and then we just uh, they take that. So get context. Um, right, context state user is, ta, 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 ta. okay, you know what, I'm just gonna go console log context, we're, gonna, we're just gonna see, we don't need to do that, I'm just gonna log that, okay, cool, so we just basically policy that does nothing for now, right, and then in routes, um, it basically should be in all routes, right? So can you define a scoped policy? So this is routes. Okay, I guess, I guess, I mean, in our, no, if, I guess if we do it as a global one, it's gonna interfere with the login and registration. That is something we don't wanna have. I guess I just gonna, just gonna add it to all, I'm just gonna add it to all of those. There we go. Okay. Save, come on, save it for me. There we go. Okay, I guess we need to restart the strapi now. And in theory, once it is restarted and once we go over here and do reload, we should see, no, it doesn't seem to be triggered. Interesting. 
uh, config. So we got policies, handle user rights. And yes, there is um, it's just, you know what? Let's just make it even dumber. Let's just make it like this. Reload. Oh, okay. Ignore the attempt to bind get with unknown policy handle user. I guess we're missing something else. Okay. Uh, global policies. No, we want scope. Scope policies can only access to the routes defined in the API where I have from the Okay. Conf oh, it should be in the config. There we go. Okay. Config. Right. Uh, permission denied. Uh, I guess I have to kill that. My VS. There we go. Okay. So policies should be within the config. This is why it should work now, right? I hope so. <laughs> Let's see. Reload that. Hey, there we go. Okay. So we actually get the context. So we should get a uh, context, right? So there was um, context state user is what we want, right? Um, okay, now I mean, what I'm interested in is so we got this. Duh, 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 duh. Uh, can we modify? Now here's the question. So basically, when we get we should modify the response, not the request, right? Uh, I guess we need to write the custom request if we want to basically accept on the user. But okay, let's you know what, let's start with the low hanging fruit. And uh, let's just rename this So let me kill the server. Let me rename this policy into add user, right? And what we are gonna say is basically, okay, I'm gonna cons uh, console log it for, okay, blah, 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 let me think, we don't need, I'm just gonna kill this from all of those. And for our post, we're gonna have a policy add user. So what I want to do is I want to take the request and take the user from it and append it to the body, right? So context, uh, what was it? State user, right? Um, console log, let me log that. Okay, so if we start it right now and then I go and add my test to do, refresh that. One more thing, wait to do, we now should see so there's our user, right? So there's our ID. This is exactly what we want to use. And we should see a request. Uh, is there, wait a second, there should be a body somewhere, right? Request. Can I actually modify a request? <laughs> That's another question. Isn't it like, does it actually allow you to do that? Uh, next, context body. Yes, you can. Okay, so you can just say context body um so what we send here is a uh, body done and we're gonna say user equals context state user id right so we just say okay i'm gonna append the user to body that's as simple as that now let's hope that works and let's actually check that okay we're up i'm actually liking the speed it works with that's very impressive so reload that as the as the very uh, okay 500 right so something doesn't really work cannot set property user of undefined oh is it trying to do that on an options request wait a second is that what happens console log on text um, and what happens so reloads Okay, and it is response method post. No, it is a post request, right? And it said user of undefined. What do you mean of undefined? You would just say this 404. Count oh, this is, I guess, a response that you can say. God damn it. Okay. Um, right. Let me think. Okay. Uh, re request. Request. There we go. Request headers method original url can i modify your body is what i'm wondering query fresh stale ip subdomains is accepts um except char sets socket where's the body do they not allow you to modify the core oh so they are just using core which means body this is the response where is my request is like a payload or something 
No, this is all... Okay, what am I missing? How do you get... Where's the request body here? Um, request, right. Header, headers, method, URL, origin, href, query string, search host, type query. How does it handle? Okay, wait. Call JSON body? Where do you get it from? Body parser, yes. This is exactly what I want. Uh, context, so it is context request body is what we want. Okay. So I guess this is what we want to try and set, right? Okay, let's try that. Okay. Servers. Okay, so it's auto restarts. I don't actually have to do it manually. And it's actually added it. This is great. And user is perfect. It linked. Okay, cool. This is straightforward. I like that. Um, let me. So what did we do now? Git add git commit add a policy that automatically Depends current user to to do. Strange object names and co-op. I mean, it makes sense for something, I guess. I mean, you know, there's, there's always a reason for that stuff. It's just not as a lot different from Express. Let's just put it this way. Okay, uh, so we got that. We got this working. Now we need to rewrite the get so that it only allows you to actually get, um, I, I should have probably killed that console. You know what, let me just, let me just amend that. There you go. Okay. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So now we need to only allow fetching to do's that are tied to the user, right? Uh, which means we need to somehow modify the response. How do we do that? This policy allow you... So policy is before it goes into controller. Do, 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 do. Restaurant find is authenticated. Okay, I guess in this case, we basically have to create our own custom controller, right? Which is a bit annoying, but you know what, whatever. Oh, I got, wait, 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 wait. So can you just override the existing controllers? Find, uh, retrieve records. Very oh, interesting. Uh, okay, so you can literally just override. So we got our to-do controller, right? And our get method is bind to do find, which means we can just do that, right? We don't care about, so what is this service and where is it coming from? Um, okay, we got the context. So we need to say uh, that we get the user, which is context state user, right? Uh, I guess we can use destruction here to make it a bit nicer. Uh, I mean, yeah, basic. I expected this to be part of the strapi, to be honest. So you know that you can just say, hey, if the user is there and if he's logged in, he can. I, there's gotta be somewhere there, right? It's, it's such a simple concept. Uh, it just feels like I'm really reinventing the session here. You are absolutely right. Now, category restaurant. So the use case they have in the documentation is restaurants, right? So the idea is that you are, as an admin, create a restaurant and then it's just consumed publicly. But this is not what we're doing. We are, maybe it's just not made for that. <laughs> Maybe it's just not how you're supposed to use it. So I guess maybe this is the limitation of it, right? So the use case for it is that you have an admin who creates the API, and then you have a users who can, can uh, um, then you get a users who uh, consume it that are basically public or whatever. And it's not supposed to be used in a way that you have a user separation sessions and everything. I mean, I guess, you know, we probably can hack it and you know, you, you can override, the, let's try to override it anyway. So what is the service and where is it coming from? Uh, let's come back to that. Uh, service, where is this service coming from? Copy, parse, sanitize, entity, sending controllers. So they use this service, but is it like a global variable or something? Let's try that. So service find, uh, I guess we can live it as is, right? So count find one service. Yeah, okay, so we just 
there's the entities and instead of sanitizing it, we're just going to return this. Let me just try that. Console log uh, finds and then I'm just going to log user. Okay, um, doesn't make sense, but maybe first, I mean, they position themselves as the um, CMS, right? So this Strapi itself, if you go to the website, it actually says this is open source headless CMS. Which makes perfect sense because in CMS, you typically have an administrator who manages the content and then there's some sort of a public facing API that you consume. So I guess this really is their use case and you like what I'm trying to build with it is doesn't make <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, let's just see if we can build it actually. I'm like, I'm, I'm now I'm curious. Okay, so we overwrite the fine thing. And if I refresh this now, uh, okay, so we got the user and there is service is not defined. Exactly. This is what I would, where is the service coming from? Controller concepts, uh, da -da -da index. So basically you can define any methods in controller and then just do that like this. Where, where is the services service? Where, how do I get the service service guide? Strapi query. Oh, can you just no? But Strapi is also had to come from somewhere, right? Where is the like? God damn it! Okay, uh, where's the GitHub? Do they have an example on GitHub? It's, for some reason, it's always easier to just understand the code here. <laughs> okay, um, API um, restaurants. Do you have custom controllers somewhere here? Okay, uh, no, you don't. Right, let's see, let's just open all of them and try to find some example that actually shows where the hell you get this service from. Uh, da -da -da -da. No, not here, controllers, category, do you have something custom here? No, you don't, controllers, country. Okay, I say no, like. So yeah, it seems like it really is the primary use case is to just be like this headless CMS that you have an ice admin panel for, which honestly it does a really good job at. It's like a really cool UI, really seamless setup and everything. And yes, you can customize things a bit. Holy crap, come on now, come on now. Um, okay, where the hell does this service come from? Um, custom controllers. Strapi generate controller, yeah, I mean, let's, I guess we can try to generate the controller. Uh, right, let's try generating a controller and see maybe just uh, kudos. Oh, right, sorry, npx strapi uh, to do's controller. Where, where did it do? Uh, generate a new controller and api to do's controllers. Uh, I don't see, is this service? No, this is not the service, right? So how do you know? Hey, Samahavits, welcome to the stream. Strapi is a global variable. Oh, so the Strapi is the global variable. God damn, this is... <laughs> okay, let me try that. So Strapi... Okay, so what we want to do is actually this. Strapi query and then... Uh, okay, so we got... We are... Okay, you know what? I don't care. We're just going to get all of them, right? Const... Um, NT, uh, entities await strapi query to do. How does this work? Strapi query. Okay, so strapi query finds params populate. Okay. Right. Is that what is this? What, what are we reading? This is a model. Okay. Fetch all records. Params populate. No, this is not what we want. We want controllers. So I basically what I'm trying to do is I try to override the find and controller so that it actually appends the user to the query. And I like, you know, I've been reinventing the sessions here for, with Strapi, something that I think it doesn't actually wasn't made for. Uh, okay, Strapi utils, service and model is named. Yeah, this is not what I want. So they, they, in their examples for the controllers, they show that they use this service thing, which I assumed was a global keyword, but it actually is not because they complain, like the code complains about it, which makes perfect sense. How do you, how do you override this? Do you know that? It would be like, if you know, it would be amazing if you could share that. <laughs> okay, we got the API, we got, 
they don't have a strappy API, admin panel hooks, local plugins, command API reference. Is it strappy.service? No, there is no strappy.service. Is it strappy.services? Doesn't seem so. Okay. Um, all right then. Um, query. Query section. Queries API. Strappy query model name plugin. Okay, find one. Okay. Maybe this will work. Let's just try it. Okay, so cool. We got entities, right? Const entities. And then we can just say strappy query. So we want to query two. Uh, no, 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 we don't have restaurants. So we want to query to do's and we want to find all. But we want to find it so that the user is actually user ID, right? So I think that should work. Uh, let's find it out. Okay, I stopped it for some reasons. Let me just start it back. Right, um, let's see. So theoretically, if it works, we should see in the front end only one. No, that doesn't work. Uh, model to do's could not be found. What do you mean cannot be found? What? You, what? What? What is this? It is a model to do's, right? Um, content manager, content time builder, there's the to do's. Uh, is it just to do? Is that what you want? To do's? Do you like care about case? I'm just guessing at this point. Try to console log strappy services to do. But wait a second. So we're querying the model now and we have the model to do. Is it just to do? Is that what I'm, what I'm supposed to do? Is that what you want? Hey, oh, there we go. Now it works. <laughs> Okay, that was slightly confusing, but we actually did it. So this now actually returns only the queries with our currently logged in user from the session. Perfect. Right, it's like it's blatantly obvious that Strapi wasn't made for this, but um, to do that is tied to user. Hey, but it actually is tied to user. And if we refresh, it actually... <laughs> I don't know why we did that. It's uh, yeah, it's it's obvious that Strapi wasn't made for this, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Um, override uh, to do find method to only return to do's for current user. So I guess yeah. I mean, <laughs> I really would like to see Strapi for the for like you know the. So okay, so here's the deal. Strapi is, as they say, headless CMS. It was made for you to log in into this backend, create your content type, and then it automatically creates a REST API or, uh, I think I stopped it, right? This is why it complains. Okay, there we go. Come on, start up, there we go. Right, so you create your content type and then you have your, you manage your content, which is like restaurants or, I don't know, books or, products or whatever you can imagine as for your front end, right? Or maybe even articles and blog posts, you can do that here. But it definitely wasn't made for building APIs with multiple tenants and sessions and stuff like this, because you have to reinvent half of this stuff yourself. It is kind of cool though, that it basically provides your roles permissions and stuff like this, but uh, yeah, it's not as flexible as I would want it to be. It would actually be interesting to see if you could build like a full on multi tenant REST API tool like this, like Strapi, you know, so that you can just say, okay, here's my to do's collection. Uh, here's the relation to users, only allow users to create and manage their own to do's because this is something that it doesn't have, right? So you have permissions, but your only permissions is basically, okay, if you're authenticated, you can do everything with all to do's. So you don't have this fine grained controller. Maybe I just didn't find it. Doesn't actually seem like, yeah, it doesn't seem like there is any more fine-grained methods to manage that. Still, it's a nice tool and uh, here's a the question, they have the plugins. Am I just an idiot and maybe they have a plugin for managing sessions? That is something I should have checked in the very beginning. Although that would not be as fun. Wait a second, Strapi. User, um, like sessions, I don't know, like, Session policies, um, user, multi-tenant, multi multi-tenant, there we go, there we go, implement multi-tenant feature. Okay, is it like a to-do thing? 
Uh, long-term strapi. Okay, it is on a long-term roadmap, and that was like a year ago. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, da -da -da. there we go. Added the project roadmap. So okay, so they have the public roadmap. And it is nice to have important critic. Um, I mean, yeah, for me, this is like basically very important. But okay, it doesn't matter. So posted in November 2018. Is there security? Where is it actually? I guess they haven't done that yet, right? Maybe the session, yeah, the, like this is what I wanted to uh, look in initially if there's like a plugin or something. But the thing is, it, it wants. So it's, it's, it's way more than a plugin, right? So plugin would tap into like one of the things that basically allows it to do, but to be multi, like truly multi-tenant to allow working with controllers, you would actually have to tap into controller. You would have to tap probably into models. You would have to tap into service and then you would have to, uh, to tap into config to set the policies to, you know, select, create and so on and so forth for a specific user. But, uh, well, at least it's on their roadmap. So it's nice to see I mean, they have a potential to be like this all, all, you know, all in one backend powerhouse, which is pretty damn impressive, to be honest, like this is a really nice tool. And even though, you know, again, it's limited now to the content management, it is very cool. I did enjoy working with it. Like, okay, docs in some places could be a bit better, but whatever. Uh, hey, Donna, just noticed your donation. Thank you very much as usual for your support. Highly appreciate it. Okay, but uh, yeah, I guess that's basically all I wanted to check for today. This is the Strapi. It is pretty neat and uh, I mean, it's quite nice to work with. And you know, we've seen the use cases where we work perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to GitHub and um, create a repo and push it there. Meanwhile, if you uh, guys in the chat have any questions, suggestions or whatever, just throw them in there. I will be more than happy to answer them. Right, uh, let me just create exploring strapi. Um, and I'm gonna be, you know what, I'm gonna be super lazy. I'm just gonna copy the description from one of the other repos we have here. Um, right, uh, simple, yeah, I guess it's just gonna be like simple to do manager with strapi. Uh, right, public, we do need a readme. I'm gonna just take this readme over here, copy it here, copies, okay. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too bad, so I definitely, you know, this, again, it's, it's a limitation of it, right? So throw it in here, um, close this, we don't need that anymore. What was the headline I already forgot? Where's the headline? God damn it, come on now, come on now. GitHub, it's just hidden it, <laughs> God damn it. Okay, uh, there we go. Simple to do manager with Strapi to the term free open source tutorial on um, creating a simple to do list with Strapi backends. Again, got materials for let's call it exploring Strapi video. I am gonna put the YouTube link here later on. Project Small Deal is showing how to use P to build a simple to-do app, uh, which is not exactly a fit for. <laughs> uh, um, which it is not exactly fit for. There we go, That's that seems okay. Strapi. So we need link to Strapi and I think that's basically it, right? Okay. Yeah, so with multi-tenancy, you could basically turn it into a full on like REST backend where you don't even have to think about managing database or validation authentication, you get all in one package. But for now, it's really just a headless CMS and I, you know, it probably would work really well as a headless CMS, but there we go. Okay, uh, we added the readme. Okay, cool. Let me just commit that. Yeah, update the readme. And now we need to push that over here. So uh, git remote ads and git push origin master. 
Thanks for leveling up on my way to work. Well, thank you for watching. I hope it was at least a bit educating. Um, it was my first experience with Strapi and it was, I mean, it was interesting. So like, I wouldn't say it's, what, what do you mean there are security vulnerabilities? I just created the project. God damn it. There's mem open to an agent and high severe. What is going, is it like a Strapi dependencies that are not updated or something? I'm guessing it is. Where is this coming from? <laughs> Sometimes this like alerts from GitHub are not exactly helpful. Uh, sorry, yarn why is what I want to know. This is coming from Strapi plug. Okay, so it's one of the Strapi plugins that are, I guess, not updated yet. Okay, yeah, cool. Whatever, this is not even important right now. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Let me just add some tags here. So it's gonna be Strapi uh, tutorial bxjs and to do, I guess, whatever. What? No, done. There we go. Okay. Cool. Um, I guess any more questions or things you want to talk about, guys? I am more than happy to do that. If not, then I guess we just wrap this up here and go do something else. I mean, we have a holiday here in Germany, so I'm just really gonna go and play video games, you know. Okay. I'll give you a couple of seconds to um. Ask your questions. If not, then we're good. Okay, we got some stuff going on here in my work repo, but that's fine. Right, doesn't seem like there's any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. As usual, if you missed uh, the stream, there's gonna be a VOD on Twitch available immediately. There's gonna be a VOD on YouTube in a few hours. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can join our Discord server and ask me there. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Have an awesome rest of the week and I see you next time. Bye.